Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. You know, there are a lot of reasons that any XRP community member may choose to call it quits, right? Uh, a lot of the time, it's, it's frankly that uh, things just aren't happening quite fast enough. I want my XRP moon money, and I want my XRP moon money now. Uh, there can be genuine fear. There can be instances where people just have tough times in life and they have to pull out of the crypto investments. There's all sorts of reasons, and each, each person should always do whatever is right for them. Um, it, it's unfortunate that there's a piece here from Daily Hoddle, which really I think is just going to spread fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And I don't blame at all the XRP the community member that wrote the tweet that led to this story. I do not blame him one single bit. Um, but I do want to talk about this here. And here's the headline. Popular XRP investor says he may ditch crypto community due to crazy conspiracy theories. This is actually a topic at this point near and dear to my heart. I, I can definitely sympathize with that. Uh, I've got some other stuff to share in this video too, though. There's some positive stuff to talk about today, unquestionably. Here's a headline from you today. Ripple partner MoneyGram expands its presence in 1.5 billion dollar remittance market. So there you go, an official Ripple partner, probably the most notable of all Ripple customers, purely because MoneyGram's pretty well a household name, and uh, they're utilizing on-demand liquidity, which does mean XRP is a bridge currency. And I've also got um, a story I want to share with you about Anthony Pompliano, uh, who is he is convinced uh, Jim Cramer to purchase Bitcoin. So how about that? I'm going to end with that story since it's not specific to XRP, but I thought it was interesting and kind of fun to talk about what's going on there. So anyway, before we go any further, if you would please, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please delicately tap the like button. Also, if you are a fan of Ripple and XRP, I think you are a super duper cool person. Prove it by subscribing to the Moon Lambo channel or something like that. A uh, shout out to Poochie who tagged me in this first story, along with another uh, number of others in the XRP community. And so the piece begins as follows. A popular crypto investor says he's considering ditching the XRP community due to the proliferation of crazy conspiracy theories. The anonymous XRP analyst known as King Solomon says on Twitter, that his research may be better off elsewhere. And here's a quote. I might have to leave this community on the basis of content provision reality. Research may be better suited elsewhere. So much conspiracy in this community. I'm getting frustrated. This is about the mindset in general. And so I can, I don't, I'll share with you. And so I actually uh, wrote back on Twitter and I got a couple likes from King Solomon. So I think we are on the same page here. I, I nothing but sympathize. And I'll tell you what, I can think back to probably, it might have been, I don't know, September or August of 2018, so a couple years ago. I'd have to go back and look. But I remember there was even a prominent uh, uh, XRP YouTuber that I was just, uh, I, I was debating uh, on Twitter. Mind you, this is before I, I even posted my first video on YouTube ever. So I, I was just completely unknown, almost completely unknown in the XRP community. But I just saw this, this nonsense from a YouTuber with a lot of subscribers talking about how within the next couple months, XRP was going to be going to $589. I kid you not, $589 by the end of the year 2019. And I want to tell you right now, as a member of the XRP community, I am still confident that we will hit $589 by the end of year 2018. <laughs> yeah, we're we're going to get there by the end of 2018. Very confident still. And so I just remember debating back and forth. And I don't remember all the specifics, but I mean, my, my tweets are still up. I think the other ones are gone. But uh, I, I, I was just debating like I don't see how any of your points make sense, so on and so forth. And so the, the conspiracy theory stuff and the, the crazy hype... It's, it's been here the whole time I've been here, but I don't think it's a majority. And I'm going to share with you more of my thoughts on that in just a second. But like this type of stuff is never going to deter me. And I'm okay with diversity a lot. I really am. Some things just strike me as super Looney Tunes. But I, I, I'm if it's something more on the side of normalcy, which I can kind of detect if something just sounds Looney Tunes, and I'm sure you can too. Most people can. And if it's just speculation, okay, that's fine. It's fun to just try and get to the truth, think through potential outcomes and all that jazz. I'm on board with that. I really am here. But in the end, there's so much great stuff happening within the XRP community that I hate the pure hype and the nonsense and the conspiracy theories and the this and that and the United States federal government is going to adopt XRP for blah, 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 blah. Just stop it. 
just stop it. We don't need that. XRP, look, and, and I, I'm not a financial advisor. I do not have a financial background, so don't buy or sell anything because of me. I'm not offering advice of any kind. But I do believe that XRP can be worth substantially more than it is today purely because there's real world, uh, uh, real world utility. And it's such a nascent asset class that XRP is in. And it, the markets are so illiquid, my gosh, it doesn't take much to get asymmetrical gains. So why can't we just be cool with the ridiculous awesomeness that is reality? And that's how I always feel. And so the piece continues. King Solomon's tweet received hundreds of responses, with many agreeing with his sentiment. Others, however, say some degree of conspiracy is to be expected when it comes to financial technology, says a Twitter user, quote, I appreciate the sentiment of what you are saying. However, I would argue that, or argue the uh, inescapable truth is that when we discuss a global financial reset or an upgrade in financial systems, we will forever be correlating the financial elite's goals alongside the technology itself. Okay. Should I even try and unpack that? <laughs> no offense to whoever wrote that. No offense. I didn't go to look and check who it is because they, they weren't cited in the piece here. Um, no offense, I, I swear. But uh, it just seems like a bunch of hyperbole. Like, and I really don't mean an offense by that. It's just... Okay, so... You'd agree that the inescapable truth is that when we discuss a global financial reset or an upgrade in financial systems, we will forever be correlating the financial elite's goals alongside the technology itself. Okay, see, this is the type of, of language that I keep seeing. I, I hear like it's like there's these shadow people, the financial elite. They're never named. They're never named, but there's the financial elites, the shadow people, the what are they, they like the lizard people, the Illuminati. Like, what is this? <laughs> I hear this all the time. Who are these yet unnamed people? Somebody tell me who they're supposed to be and what the heck's going on there. I mean, there's always powerful people in powerful positions, but uh, this is one of the cool things about, from my perspective, about investing in a decentralized cryptocurrency like XRP. Like, nobody has any special permissions over the ledger, so if this thing does become a thing, continues to be adopted, and more money flows in, this and that, uh, I'm in now. So, so what if other people that have more money and notoriety anywhere in life are doing something like that. But then these types of people that are actually making real positive changes in the real world, you could say some of them are, are, are working at Ripple and created Ripple. It's like, it, are these the types of people that you're talking about? They're just people, you know? There's not these shadow figures anyway. But uh, the XRP community has circulated numerous theories about the asset and Ripple for years. One popular theory is that XRP is destined to skyrocket to $589 compared to its current value of 25 cents at time of writing. And I'm not talking about ultimately where XRP can go in terms of price action. When, when I was talking, what I was talking about earlier before I had launched my YouTube channel in 2018 was the idea of it getting there by the end of 2018. There was no, like in terms of market cycles, knowing that XRP was just purely following Bitcoin and where we were at and just in terms of, you know, this bear market in a downtrend, it's pretty much undeniable. But for some reason, the floodgates gates were going to open and then bam, because of magical utility, all these corridors magically opening all at once, uh, it was going to somehow mechanically push the price up to 589. And I, I kept making the point when I was debating this individual, I was like, no, 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 that's actually not how it works. You have it backwards. There has to already be sufficient liquidity in, in place with a sufficient price ice in order for transactions to occur. It's not that uh, suddenly you open these corridors and there's something mechanical that pushes the price up and it's just, it, it wasn't having it. Um, so, so there, there we go. And so here's, um, here's ultimately what, what I wrote in response. And I, again, I don't blame King Solomon one bit uh, for the, for, for feeling this way. And so I did respond and I wrote, I sympathize and I see the nuttiness you're talking about regularly, but I genuinely believe there are far more level-headed XRP community members out there. Uh, when I was making videos shredding the idea of the quantum financial system and XRP backed by gold, my videos were still getting 95% likes on YouTube, which to me was pretty, um, pretty like, it made me feel warm and fuzzy inside because I was like, see, I knew it. Like, there's not that many lunatics out there. There, there really are not. People are pretty level-headed and they just want the truth. They don't need all of this crazy conspiracy, uh, conspiracy theory tinfoil hat nonsense here. And then I wrote, the truth is that sometimes it's the fringe community members that scream the loudest, which can give the impression that they hold a mainstream opinion within the community, but they absolutely do not. I hate hype, so if they're not willing to hear my differing opinion, too bad. And that is indeed how I feel. Um, there's another tweet I want to share from XRP community member Martin Valk that I just liked. And he wrote in response to King Solomon, uh, focus on the people who deserve your attention. It is hard to do an environment, uh, hard to do in an environment as negative as Twitter 
but trust me, you have the ability to change the lives of the few people, or the few that uh, really appreciate your work. That makes it worth it in the end. And so, yeah, I, I'd, I'd send nothing but messages of encouragement to uh, to King Solomon. I, I appreciate he's, he's, I'd say, pretty well known in the community, and I, I appreciate what he's doing here personally. So, um, and it, it just stinks that um, Daily Huddle took this to put as an opportunity to put something out that is really just going to spread on on certainty and to get. Not blaming King Solomon one bit. Totally valid tweet. Totally valid thing to bring up. I kind of have complained about this myself, and they could have picked up something for me and ran with it as well. And uh, but, but but yeah, I'm always gonna complain about uh, the, like the the Looney Tune stuff out there, and I'm always gonna call it out. And if those people don't like it and get offended because I have a penny that's not nutty, <laughs> it's grounded in reality and it's just different than theirs. Well, I can't control that emotional response that they have. I don't get offended by opinions that are different than mine, but I do if I firmly disagree with an opinion with somebody within the XB community. I just think it should be okay. To, to have that exchange of ideas in an adult setting without people getting offended. But some people still, I mean, it's it's not like it's the, there's something fundamentally wrong with the XRP community. There's not. You just get a, a and that community this big are going to get um, every type of God's creature. You know what I'm saying out there? Okay. <laughs> that, that's how I phrase it. Some people are going to get butt hurt by opinions that are not the same as their own. And okay. It's even in this community that can happen, but that's not most people. It really isn't. And that's, that's certainly been my impression. Now, um, take a look at this piece from you today. Ripple partner MoneyGram expands its presence in $1.5 billion remittance market. So well, everybody else is uh, freaking out about various this or that, whether it's price. Uh, some people are engaging in conspiracy theories. The adults out in the world are just kind of building out the ecosystems in which they really need to thrive. So MoneyGram, Dallas-based remittance company and one of Ripple's most prized partners, is expanding its presence in the East Africa region by joining forces with Uganda's largest commercial bank, Centenary Bank. Uh, Daryl Peterson, the regional director of uh, for South and East Africa at MoneyGram, praised Centenary Bank for its operational excellence in a sentence, and the quote is as follows. MoneyGram is proud to partner with Centenary Bank, a known for superior customer service and operational excellence. We are confident Centenary Bank will attract a significant portion of the over $1 billion remittance flows into Uganda. Now again, MoneyGram, key partner with Ripple here, and I understand that this specifically today in September of 2020, does not have anything to do with on-demand liquidity and XRP, but understand that as connections continue to be built out, even if it's MoneyGram, who knows what the implications are in the future. And so I'm just saying things are going to keep on trucking forward. There will be additional liquidity in the future, I certainly believe. And I think that that will bode well for confidence, which ultimately will transfer to value. And then after, after translating to value, translate to price. And in the short term, I, given how nutty things are in crypto, I don't even think that there needs to be a ton of utility for people to go wacky with price again. I'm seeing that people, even in 2020, a lot of them still behaving like it's uh, like it's 2017. Just seeing. I mean, we, we shall see here. Now, here's a tweet from Anthony Pompliano. He's a co-founder of Morgan Creek Digital. He's very well known on social media. Uh, definitely uh, more on like the Bitcoin maxi side, but I like this guy. And he wrote the following, just convinced Jim Cramer to buy Bitcoin. Reply to this tweet with your best meme or gif to welcome the world's newest Bitcoiner. I always like it when somebody that is like pretty well household name jumps on board. It's just kind of a fun story. And so there's a piece about this from Cointelegraph titled, Pump claims he convinced Jim Cramer to buy Bitcoin. And it does indeed look that way. A Bitcoin bull, Anthony Pompliano, may have just persuaded Jim Cramer, the outspoken host of CNBC's Mad Money, to invest in crypto. In a September 10th tweet, Pomp claimed to have converted the man who once stated that Bitcoin was the monopoly money in a recording of his podcast, uh, scheduled to be released September 14th. His statement appears to have been confirmed by Kramer, who retweeted Pompliano immediately. And it's the tweet that I just shared with you right there. So interesting stuff. I just thought I'd wrap up the video by sharing it with you. But uh, I would love to hear what you think below. I don't know. There's got to be a bunch of you listening that kind of feel the way I feel about all the hype and nonsense. But like to, to me, it's never going to deter me. I'm just going to keep on trucking. And I, I just have fun talking about this stuff. And I figure like even if I have a Twitter conversation or, or a, like a little back and forth in the comment section of one of my YouTube videos about stuff like this. Even if it, I'm not ever, ever going to persuade somebody uh, persuade somebody that 589 end of year 2018 was wacky, or even if I can't convince somebody that XRP isn't backed by gold, even though there's literally no evidence, or even if I can't convince somebody that by the end of August of this year, the quantum financial system is not going to take over. By the way, it didn't. We're still here. 
Uh, is Swift, is Swift still here? I mean, you know, Swift's market share is going to keep going down, I think, but they were, they're they still in business. Sorry, guys. It was a wacky conspiracy. And so even if I can't convince those people, I know that there are plenty of people that are reading the back and forth and forming their own opinions after hearing our, our, you know, articulated positions from my side and then whoever has the different point of view. And I think that in these instances where I'm grounded in reality and the other people just sound like they're in Looney Tunes land, I think that most people ultimately are going to you know, be rational and see, yeah, what this other guy is saying doesn't make sense. And then when I press for evidence or this is that, why do you hold this opinion? I never get anything when it's these types of conspiracy theory things, which is what you'd expect because they're made of conspiracy theories. And so I'm always gonna push back because there are other people out there that are new to the space that are, are kind of like me, right? Especially, I remember when I entered the space late 2017, I just wanted truth. And when you just enter, if somebody's talking this or that about quantum financial system, end of year 2018, 589, it's hard to make sense and cut through the noise. And so I, one of the things that I did to learn was just expose myself to as many different viewpoints as possible on Twitter and XRP chat. I'd hear opposing viewpoints from a couple different people or three or four or five, whoever's involved in the conversation, and then I'd make my own determination of what I thought made sense. And sometimes I was like, okay, that person sounds Looney Tunes. Okay. And so I think that, that that's why for me, I'm always happy to have these types of discussions. And it's it's fun just to like have a back and forth because sometimes somebody's not Looney Tunes and they're just wrong or they got tricked or this or that, and, and, and something fruitful can can come of it, certainly. So, to me, it's just a lot of fun here. But that is it for this video. Please tell me what you think below. I just, I could not feel more optimistic for the future of, of XRP, just, just in general. And uh, the rest of the noise ain't gonna, ain't gonna stop no moon limbo. But that's it for this video. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything, because if anything I say or write, that would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon limbo!